All right, so for leather straps, I will start with uh, the same brown I did use for the shirt uh, pattern. And I will base coat everything that is, that will be leather. So that mean the old armor here So for leather, I really like to use either a shade or a contrast paint. To get everything divided. So I will do also all the straps here, the belt. So yeah, for, for sure this is a better idea to start doing this than working the beard first. So base coat can be uh, quite rough. As we will add multiple layers of paint over it. does not need to be one perfect layer. So I will do the boots more uh, black than brown. I think we have already enough brown on the model, so the boots will be more uh, maybe very dark red brown or black. Right, I think this is it for uh, the basic leather base coat. So I will use a contrast paint to get my shading on this. You could use some Agrax Earthshade or uh, I will use some um, Gore Grunta Fur here, which will give a more red look to the leather but we will work over it after. So I'm not using the contrast uh, as Games Workshop are actually advertising them. I'm more about uh, glazing them, glazing the, uh, the contrast, just to have a fine coat. As soon as I get the details, I'm happy. I don't want it to, uh, to pull everywhere so what I want is actually to uh, to get my pattern I want my pattern and I want uh, the lining on the edge I don't want to leave a very big uh, pooling of contrast everywhere So that will give the basic color of the letter. After we will go back with uh, our light brown and we will start doing the highlights. lights. 
So I'm trying to use the contrast to do my my black lining. Even if I'm using a brown, I just want to have that very dark line between it each sections. So you can see how pigmented contrast paints are. Right, we are done with the contrast. So what I will do right now is take uh, some orange brown that is close to the contrast color. So I would like this, right? This is what I will mix my base coat with so when you're painting leather you want to have uh, the, the worn effect to it and it's mostly the edges that are getting highlighted so this is this work will be a bit harder as that will be working individually every part of of the armor trying to leave only the black lining between so I will make a small section and then I will accelerate the video so I'm going now I'm going with a lighter color and I will do mostly only the edges the top edges of each part of the padded armor I will add some off-white to my my base color to make the final highlight at the tip of every Like that so we will see uh, at the end I will make a small place to blend everything together but this is how we will work it everything needs to be uh, highlighted individually like this 
So I will accelerate the video. Alright, so the padded armor is uh, mostly done. There are some places I don't add highlight because they will be uh, shadowed a bit more. I don't want highlight there. So we will make uh, the straps. Doing the straps is a little bit different. As what you want to do actually is to paint the edges. I'll try to zoom in a bit. What you want to try is to paint the edges like this and then uh, make some lines to simulate uh, the letter cracking a bit. So you do this and you do it with uh, brighter one, brighter highlights. You make some small dots and small lines, a bit random. Just to simulate an uh, old letter. Like this, this is a quick way to do it. After this, if you want, you can add uh, colors to it, like blue. like this.
Okay, so the base coats are uh, not the base coat, the highlights are done. What I will do now is uh, take my mid tone, which is uh, the yellowish brown, and I will glaze it everywhere. So to glaze, it's only to apply a very small amount. You don't want it to pull into all the recess. So you just glaze it. To blend everything together. Might take uh, two coats three coats you just want to get back a little bit of that uh, yellowish tint into your uh, your letter you could use some inks I will show you after so I will do one coat with uh, the paint and then I will show you what it gives with inks so there's a huge difference between both because the inks are a lot more a lot more uh, saturated so it will do the work really faster as I want uh, I want it to be equal everywhere I will do one coat with the paint and one with the ink All right, ink time. Here we go. This is the kind of ink I am talking about. So this is a very diluted, but very strong colors. So if I do one coat with this one, you will see that the color will change straight straight away so I will get back my yellowish brown color and it will uh, blend everything together I'll take a bigger brush it will be easier So apply, try to apply an even coat. Even if you do it with paint and you don't have uh, inks, try to apply even coats to get the same color everywhere. Like this, so you can see that I did uh, get my color more yellowish now. So I will leave the letter like this uh, for the moment and we will start painting uh, the beard. The beard, uh, I will start with a dark brown. And I will work my way up to some uh, yellowish, like red, yellow beard. So I will take a dark brown. And 
I will do my base coat everywhere. So this is probably where uh, the model will start. Looking a lot better. Because at some point when uh, not everything got color on, it's hard to, to just imagine, imagine what uh, it will look like. At this point, there will be mostly the boots and the metallic left to paint. So I think everyone will uh, start having a good idea of what it will look like. So you, uh, you will notice that I am not putting my paint on my wet palette because this this paint which is a uh, p3 umbral umber is quite thin already Alright, so base coat is done. Now we can have a better look at the face. I will start the highlights off the beard. To do so, I will mix my paint with a reddish. I'm tr I'm always using most most of the time. I'm using uh, a limited palette so I'm I'm not switching a lot of uh, paint colors because that makes everything fits together so this is the red that I did mix my uh, yellowish brown for the letter with this is what I will use to uh, start mixing uh, and uh, highlighting the beard So I'm going very roughly at the beginning just to get the good area with the good color. So I'm I'm working like that a lot. I'm starting and doing kind of my my highlights from the top of the part to the bottom and then I had some definition on all the parts after.
All right, so let's go for more orange. I was painting with uh, flat brown, and I'm going to uh, red leather, which is more orange, and I will mix both, and I will start to do more uh, controlled lines. Yes, this is where I'm starting to uh, to paint all the air. You can see I'm doing some lines instead of just painting the whole area. can start to see that the highlights are slowly showing at this stage I'm still highlighting the old beard but with the next ones I will start only uh, highlighting some parts of it so it will create some kind of gradient from the top of the beard to the down part. So right now this is more about creating volumes of the beard. So we can uh, we can see all the recess, all the darker parts. So once again, it's quite a long process as you have to take all one by one. You cannot, uh, there's no way to go fast. <laughs> you, you need to do it one by one and multiple times.
we will now start to uh, place the more specifically um, targeted eyelights so they will not go all the way down necessarily to uh, to the beard we'll try to start making a gradient so I'm taking a bit more orange into my mix and I start adding the highlights you will notice that uh, when the paint dries it's not as bright as when I apply it so you have to uh, to check if you uh, you need to add more orange or not. But this is the same with all colors. When they are actually drying, they are not as bright as how they appear when you first apply it and it's wet. So I do it, but I skip a few ones that I want to keep darker. So this is where I uh, kind of want to follow the zenithal highlighting that you had. If you uh, if you took a picture of your model at the start, this is where the picture could be useful. So now I will only highlight the top here. And my next color will actually be uh, mixing some gray in it. And trying to do some uh, gray hair in some spots. Right, so you can see the color building slowly. There is no secret uh, when painting this. If you want to go faster, you need to use some kind of uh, wash or contrast paint. But if you want to have uh, the full definition of the beard, you're gonna have to do it by hand. The same for the top of the air, I'm starting to pick the major uh, strands of air and I don't touch uh, anything that is close to the ears that, that are going on the side, I'm starting to highlight only the top. So I skip a few uh, parts of the beard under uh, of the air and as I will highlight I will skip more and more. So that will create a kind of gradient by itself.
Right, we are now up to the next next color, which will be the the orange by itself, orange brown. And I will use a lot, a lot more, uh, a lot less area to highlight. I'm trying to just reflect where the light should be on on the beard, like this. Right after this, I will uh, I will try to include a bit of uh, gray. Right. Let's uh let's get a bit of gray into that beard, and maybe on the side of, of the head here. I will start with a warm gray, like, like this brown gray. And I will try to head so I will go over with the orange a little bit, but I just want to head a bit of gray here around uh, I think I will change that whole thing here. Great. I will keep just a little bit of orange. I will mix with some off-white to get a warmer uh, and brighter gray slowly so I will do the same the same pattern I will start doing some this is a bit too diluted some small lines and I will add more white To even small lines.
Right, let's do it also on the side of his head here. Just to show that this is not a young dwarf. <laughs> I'll try to put a bit more warm gray here. Right. So I will finish uh, the highlights everywhere now. I just included the gray to give uh, an older look. I need to do the eyebrow also. I'm going to forget them, but it's quite important for a dwarf. also and I will finish with the yellow is a bit too strong so I will cover it with uh, the orange and I will do only a few lines a bit diluted so it's not too obvious all right Let's keep going with the highlights, with the orange, pure orange now, well, red letter as it's called. So I'm doing this only in the brightest area now.
So at the end, I will come and kind of blur a bit everything that is around uh, the head, and I will make some very uh, small lines that will go on the forehead. All right, so that's uh, that's it for that highlight. So I will do one more highlight, a lot brighter, to to get some kind of reflection going on. 